Okay, so let's let's start putting this into practice, and let's do a couple examples here. Okay, so the first one we're looking at reads thus: Carol wants to move her 32 kilogram sofa to a different room in the house. She places sofa sliders, slippery discs, with a coefficient of kinetic friction mu k equals 0 0.080 on the carpet under the feet of the sofa. She then pushes the sofa at a steady 0 0.40 meters per second across the floor. How much force does she apply to the sofa? Okay, so we've got Carol pushing her sofa. Uh, we're going to make some assumptions here. One, we're just going to start off with a free body diagram. Now we can see that every force is going to really factor into our calculations here. So we, first we've got the weight of the sofa in the downward direction. And obviously, because the sofa is not accelerating downwards, there has to be a normal force in the upward direction. And we can see that she does have to push the sofa. We're asked how much force does she apply to the sofa, so she definitely has a push on the sofa. We're going to assume it's perfectly horizontal. We're going to call that FP for the force of her push. And we'll see, too, that there is a force of friction on the sofa. Now, we want to take a look at this and think about this and say, OK, well, how does the force of friction compare to the force of the push in this case? Well, notice it says she then pushes the sofa at a steady 0 0.40 meters per second across the floor. So, in this direction, we know in the y direction the forces are balanced, but we can say too, in the horizontal direction, is the sofa accelerating? Well, no, right? And if it is not, then we know that the force of her push has to be balanced exactly by the force of friction. So we should make its vector equal in magnitude to the force of push and opposite in direction. So here's our free body diagram of the sofa being pushed across the floor. And we're asked about the force of her push, which we can see is happening in the x direction. So first, we'll take the sum of the forces in the x direction, which is the force of her push minus the force of friction. Well, we have already said, you know, if we replace this with mass times acceleration, we have the second law. And that's the force of the push minus the force of friction. But we know that the object is not accelerating, so the net force in that direction is zero. We can see pretty easily that the force of the push has to be equal to the force of kinetic friction in this case which is all right and good, but we don't know what that force is. One thing we do know about it from our equations right here, we can say that the force of the push then being equal to the force of friction is going to be equal to mu k multiplied by the normal force. Now, in order to solve this further, we've got to know what that normal force is. We know mu k. They gave that to us. That's that 0 0.80 number. What we need is the normal force. So anytime we do a problem like this, we will now have to calculate and find out what the normal force is. For this problem, that means that we're going to have to do the sum of the forces in the y direction, too. We have the normal force in the positive direction and the weight in the negative direction. Once again, the sofa is neither accelerating upwards nor downwards. So when we trade out Newton's law for the summation of forces, we'll see that's going to be 0, which equals Fn minus. And we also know that the weight is mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So we can see here that the normal force is going to equal the sofa's mass times the acceleration due to gravity. We can take this value and put this into our equation now to find the force of Carroll's push. We can see that 
the force of the push being mu k times the normal force, and knowing now that the normal force is equal to the weight of the object, or mg, we've got mu k mg. We know mu k, we know the mass, and we know the acceleration due to gravity, so we will simply put those numbers in. You should be getting about 25.088 newtons of force for the force of the push. Uh, you can round that to 25 newtons if you feel so inclined. I don't feel inclined either way.